Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. So this was a question that came up on the Facebook page that uh, some were asking for us to go into a little more detail on. So uh, this question says, name that rhythm and to choose the best answer. So what we have given here is a rhythm strip. You can see here lead V5, okay, one of our left lateral precordial leads. Okay, and it's either A, is this representing second degree AV block type one, first degree AV block WPW or Wolf Parkinson white pattern, or sinus rhythm with AV dissociation. Okay, so kind of knowing a little bit about some of these can help you differentiate and try to cancel some of these answer choices off. Okay, so let's look at this rhythm strip. So what we have going on here is we have these ventricular complexes, right? These RS complexes through, okay? As you notice, we don't really see any P waves here, okay? And then all of a sudden we have our T wave and then we have this wave here. We have this wave again, one coming here, one that's popping there at the end, okay? One that's coming somewhere in here, okay? and then after there, and so forth, okay? And you can see that even this hump here, okay? One that's coming probably somewhere at the top of the T wave, okay? And what are those things that are causing um, morphologic changes in our T wave, as well as some of these? These are actually P waves, okay? So these are P waves that are popping up throughout our rhythm strip here, okay? So let's kind of look at these answer choices. So first of all, these AV blocks, okay? So we have four different AV blocks that we should be aware of, okay? So AV blocks, there's the first type, first degree AV block, okay? And what happens here? Well, what we have here is a increase in our PR interval, okay? So in adults, that means it should be greater than or equal to 200 milliseconds. Remember the normal PR intervals between 120 and 200 milliseconds or three to five small boxes, okay? So once you hit that 200 milliseconds, you're thinking first degree AV block. Now what goes on here with first degree is that there are no drop beats, okay? So you have constant prolongation of a PR interval, okay? Meaning that if you looked at this complex here, from beginning to end, if this stayed consistent and we had that same complex, this happening over and over again, okay, we would consider that a first degree AV block, okay? So we don't have that here, so B is certainly wrong. Well, how about second degree AV blocks? Well, we have two different types. There's the type one, okay, as well as type two, all right? And type one is where we have these PR intervals that progressively lengthen, and then we have a dropped beat, okay? So in terms of first degree AV block, there are no uh, dropped beats, okay? And then with second degree AV block, we have an increase in our PR interval. So imagine you have a PR interval that's like this, okay? Then the complex that follows, so here's our T wave. We have a PR interval and one that lengthens a little bit, okay? And then we have a P wave, okay? and then a dropped beat, okay? And then you can have another complex that shows up and it'd be another QRS and so forth. So notice your PR interval from here to here is prolonging and then you have this drop complex and then that PR interval that follows here is shorter than that one that precedes, okay? So that's a good way to tell if you have uh, Mobitz uh, type one or two. So this is Mobitz type one we just saw and that's certainly not occurring in our rhythm strip here. Remember, you can remember that's Winky Bach or longer, longer, longer drop. So as the uh, PR interval prolongs, you have a drop complex. So that you can remember as longer, longer, longer drop, that's a sign of Winky Bach, okay? Or Mobitz type one, second degree AV block. Now with type two, uh, second degree AV block, this is where we have uh, complexes with a PR interval that stays, stays constant. And then we have just dropped beats that occur sporadically, meaning that there's no uh, pattern whatsoever, where we saw with the first degree or second degree Mobitz type one, there was that prolongation of the PR interval. Here we just have these complexes that have a P wave, okay, and then all of a sudden we may have a drop beat as we saw here, okay. But there is no pattern usually to it whatsoever, okay. So that's Mobitz uh, type two second degree AV block, all right. And the third degree AV block is a type of um, pretty much AV dissociation. So meaning that the atrium ventricles are not really talking to each other or complete AV block. So this is complete third degree AV block. Okay. And pretty much what we have going on here where we have P waves going at their own rate. 
okay, throughout. And if you noticed our R to R intervals throughout from R wave, one R wave to the next, they are consistent, okay? So these R to R intervals stay consistent throughout. So uh, you can see that the atrial beats or the P waves are going at their own rate, and so are these ventricular complexes, okay? So that's what we have here is this AV dissociation, all right? And then you'll notice that you can have a third degree AV block and still sinus rhythm present. Remember, when we look at sinus rhythm, we're pretty much looking at, uh, is the rhythm originating from the sinus node? Well, in this case, okay, we have lead V5, and normally the P wave axis is directed somewhat towards that leftward anteriorly and inferiorly, so kind of going towards that lead. So we may see these upright P waves, okay? We'll see the upright P waves in these lateral um uh, precordial leads. So that's something we can see and something we usually do see in those leads. So yes, sinus rhythm is likely present. I know we only have one lead here, but all those P waves uh, appear the same, at least those that we can see. So this is likely the best answer. Remember, the best answer we're going for is likely this one. So how about WPW pattern? Okay. So again, this is one of those um, AV reentrant tachycardias that you can form. But what the pattern looks like is you have a P wave, Okay, and then you have what's called a delta wave, so this upsloping slurring of the initial person portion of the QRS complex, okay, and then the end of it. So what you have in this WPW pattern is a short PR interval. So this is the PR interval. So you have a short PR interval, something we certainly don't see here. Maybe the only one would be in this case, but not throughout. You have prolongation of the QRS interval, okay? So this QRS interval reaches at least 120 milliseconds, so it's prolonged, and it's prolonged because of this initial slurring. What's happening is that the impulse is going down this um, AV uh, pathway that's kind of uh, kind of causing that initial upsloping of that, all right? So you have uh, this atrioventricular pathway that's bypassing the normal AV nodal conduction, and that's where you get that upsloping from, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. That's something we don't see here. And remember that upsloping is called a delta wave, okay? The upsloping that we mentioned here, okay? Now we've already kind of, so if we draw it again, this initial upsloping, okay, right here is that delta wave, okay? Again, not the best drawing there, but uh, hopefully that makes sense, okay? So Again, not second degree AV block type one, not uh, first degree AV block, not WPW pattern. So the best answer is this sinus rhythm with AV dissociation. So hopefully that uh, clarifies some of the confusion that was going on. Uh, if not, you can obviously leave a uh, comment below and uh, I'd do my best to try to answer that for you. Now, again, I wanna bring your attention to, I know many of you have already ordered, we've sold out of these, but of our new course and new book that's out, The Ultimate EKG Breakdown, okay? And this is over 175 pages, all color. You can see an example of it up here, okay? We have both the big book that opens as a regular book and you can see that here. And then overlying it, this one here, is the pocket version that can fit right in your pocket, whether you have your white coat or you're on the go. If you're a paramedic, it's uh, nice. I have it usually when I'm in clinic or on, in the hospital on rounds, and honestly, uh, it's come in use quite a bit, okay? Especially when uh, you're on a cardiology rotation or you know, you're a nurse and you need something to refer to, okay? It can really be a great aid. All right, so those are the two versions. This pocket version is now available. I know many of you have already ordered it, but those that have not even maybe heard of the course, um, you can find that's available. And so it's over 175 pages. Every page in the book has a corresponding lecture, okay? So there's over 150 lectures um, that you get access to. That's over 25 hours. It's about 30 hours. You get calipers, right? So it's good to have those calipers around and I find them useful to have and it's a cool thing to have, not many do, so uh, you'll stand out. So that's one thing. And then lastly, I've added some bonus clinical cases, okay? So not only do you get 
the how to look in depth at these, how to localize an infarct, but you're also getting these clinical cases. And that's like, how does, when a patient presents and we get their EKG, how do we approach it? How do we break it down? Uh, so you're really not missing anything on the EKG. I think that's one of the most useful is getting practice, okay? Uh, too many books, whether it's Dubin's or some of these introductory, you know, lay out too many basic stuff and really do not get you to that clinically applicable level okay so that's hopefully what i'm trying to do okay is bring you advanced knowledge in a very easy way to digest uh as well as providing you that clinical useful knowledge that you need to really deliver better patient care okay so again you can check that out here's the website you can go to www.ekg.md and look at the shop okay i know many have already purchased so thank you uh for your support uh, we really try to make a product that is high quality and low cost. I mean, just being here at Mayo Clinic, I see what they charge for courses and uh, it's very expensive and it's not only here, it's everywhere. So I want you to um, really have a great quality product at an affordable price, okay? Because this is something that at all levels, EKG education is truly lacking. All right, well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.